Mercedes at the team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We got Chart Talk 103 coming at you right now. We got a pretty exciting market on our hands, so let's jump right into the market outlook. And we, we're dealing with a momentum market right now. It's, it's, it's as plain as that, you know? We got that first up move in the SPY after we pulled back from highs. Pulled back, you know, for four or five days, controlled pullback, and then the market just absolutely exploded in the two and a half weeks since. Uh, we're seeing it across, really. You know, tech is ripping, and now what's really promising is the IWM, the small caps. You know, you take a look at this chart, they've been basing for the entire year. So if this set, if these, all these stocks can break out, you know, you fact, you figure the breakout move would be, you know, a pretty massive, massive move as we've been consolidating for the past year. So uh, seeing that action today is, is, is very promising. Very, very promising. So, um, you know, the market's high. Uh, we've been on a crazy run, but I honestly, now we're seeing the IWM today, I'm in the camp that we could continue higher for a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult to say with this market, with the SPY, and uh, we're just, you know, new all-time highs every day, but there's really nothing to slow us down. We have a huge Fed meeting Wednesday where they lay out the taper schedule, allegedly. That could be a headwind to the market. You know, that's, that's the one thing I'm thinking that could bring us down this week. Other than that, though, it's been pretty smooth sailing. We've got some great earnings names and uh, earnings reactions so far. I've got a huge watch list built. Uh, ben, what are you thinking over there? So very similar uh, camp as you as well. So I kind of wrote in this, this weekend's week picture about we tend to, or at least I somewhat anticipate the doji at highs. And we, you know, for, you know, the spy retested that prior all time high, uh, 455, we saw doji at highs. My expectation was we held that and pull back in and the market, the complete opposite. Right. And the reaction of that was waiting for the doji and then seeing the next day's action. You know, the next day the market traded higher and we've continued to kind of grind up as a result of that. So taking away, we're doing less of the anticipating of what I think the market can do and more of reacting to what it is doing it will tend to be easier. And with what you, what you mentioned, it's like now I'm starting to see, okay, maybe 450 is now the new short term area of support. And maybe we could drift higher. You know, who's to say that we can't drift to 480 or, or to 500? Now that we're, you know, we have this new little leg to kind of stand out. But again, we could easily push back down to 450. That is anyone's guess. But um, kind of similar outlook that you have with, you know, why could we, why can't we not continue this, this up move now right. that we are at new highs? Um, so even with them, you know, mid caps, you know, you mentioned the small caps, small and mid. We've both been watching for quite some time as they've been, again, flagging and consolidating for almost a year now. Uh, mid caps finally broke through that breakout level um, this week. And then, we, again, we have the small caps that are, like, right at that breakout level, that 234. So, again, all definitely good signs um, from a broader, broader market outlook standpoint. Absolutely. All right. What are we doing? Top ideas now? Yeah. All right, let me run through. I got, I got a few. There's like, there's literally like 80, 80 earnings names that I like that I need a, to wait on a flag. So I'm not going to go through that whole list today. But there's a few that, um, that are starting to set up sooner rather than later. So that's what I'm really going to uh, focus on. First up, Texas Roadhouse, TXRH. You know, we see this huge base. And then we look at that earnings Thursday. We look at that nice earnings reaction. They give us inside day, I mean, earnings Friday. Nice reaction, nice follow through today. So now if we can break through these earnings highs, this 93.50 area, you know, it's coming out of a big base. This thing could see 110, 120 um, throughout the rest of the quarter. Uh, this other one, FFIV, I like this one a lot. I started legging into this one today. Um, what it did, you know, it exploded on earnings through all time highs retraced the move, filled the gap, found support, and bounced off that you know previous resistance, turned new support, and is now headed higher. So I bought this one like 214.50 or whatever against these lows. Um, I just started to leg into that one. Uh, M-A-S-I, Massey. So you see this all-time high resistance. They're trying to uh, break, break through, break out of our 52-week high. I didn't, I didn't look back. But uh, the trigger, so the earnings day highs is that this 295 right here. So now we see this, you know, kind of mini flag forming on the daily. If it can break that 295, uh, I think this one will be uh, a leader for this quarter. Uh, 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 GPC. This is one I was look. I, I call. I was talking about this in pre-market today. Um, this is somewhat similar to FFIV, where 
It made that big earnings day move right here and has since pulled into the, to the previous resistance level. And now this is a support buy. So I'm going to be buying 132, 132.50 in this one tomorrow. I have a feeling this one triggers. Um, TDY. This one's still setting up. This one needs more time, but it could be soon. So this was the earnings day right here, October 27th. You know, it had the gap up and now it's trying to consolidate that move. Got to resistance a little too quickly. But if we can get through those highs at 462, 463, I think that one's going to be a great one. Um... Y-O-U, shit, I've just been watching this show all day. Um, <laughs> this 46 level is really nice. I would like more consolidation in front of the level because you know, right now true support is down at 40. I don't want to give a $40 name, $6 risk, that's too much. So it's looking like it has a nice breakout set up from the base in it. Uh, I would like an inside day or a few consolidation days, but that one looks like it's pretty ready. And then lastly, m way more macro, T-D-O-C, Teladoc. Um, this name, it was a huge COVID name. We saw, you know, it, it had a big fall from grace. And then it came out with these earnings, and they're kind of proving that they're not just a uh, pandemic company. They're still seeing growth and all these things. So the stock ripped up higher off these lows, and uh, I would look for a, a really macro trade through this 153 area. But this, this is a, a very long-term trade. I wouldn't trade this in my active account. This is kind of like you buy 153, you give it the room. You give it the room down to 130, and you let this play out the whole quarter. Um, it, so, you know, these type of setups, they're very difficult to have size and, and kind of capture the move. So what I do is I attack them in the long-term account so that the gyrations don't affect me as much, and I can, you know, keep that macro scope. Uh, those are the, that's my short list of, of what I'm looking at, you know, tomorrow, rest of the week. What are you looking at over there? So I got a couple I'll go through. First up is Goldman, up through this 420 blue sky breakout. Earnings are out of the way, um, so I'm keeping a close eye on that. You know, maybe versus 400, you know, 408 ish. Uh, for now, looking for like a little momentum break. This DRI, we um, we keep an eye on this name for the better part of the year up through this 150 area. Um, earnings kind of took it away, gapped up, and it has since kind of came back down and and kind of holding up rate under the 200 day. So kind of keeping an eye on this up through that 150. First, the 200-day, kind of the 142 area. Um, this FRT has <coughs> earnings in a couple days, but still keeping an eye on that 122 blue sky breakout once earnings are out of the way, which seems to be in three days. Um, TXT, up through 75. Earnings are out of the way in this one. Um, but this was what I mentioned, the big picture, where I'm not necessarily looking to buy this, say, tomorrow at 75, being, you know, it would be technically Four fourth days day. Up. Yeah. yeah, it's like, so like if it's going to go tomorrow, it's, I have no problem with just kind of sitting on the sidelines. But if it's not ready just yet and has to kind of set up more, then, and it can tighten up, then I'll look for an entry. But again, not going to be looking to buy it tomorrow. Um, Travelers, another blue sky breakout. It's kind of- TRV. Kind of the, yeah, TRV up through this kind of 163 half, 164 area. It's been kind of testing this kind of 162-ish, 164 area since- Pretty much all 2021 and it's getting a little bit tighter up here um, but probably still needs some time um, and lastly this mdb in this earnings flag i'm actually pretty glad to that it failed this 520 area um, so just now it can kind of set back up it's still in this earnings flag you know versus you know 440 so if it can kind of pull back in and work its way back into 520 in a couple weeks then this could be a nice little breakout you know up into the 600s in time so those are a couple of the main ones I'm keeping an eye on for the week ahead. I like it. All right, so we want to get into good and bad trade? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll start. Um, so this is tough because so this match, you know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad trade. You know, what I did well in this name was get rid of a lot of stock into strength. Let me uh, fix my little chart here. Show executions for seven days. All right, so you can't see. So I got out of seven eighths of my position on that massive move to 182 or whatever it was, and then I had to, I held a what is that 12 and a half percent of my position back down to this 158. You rarely, I mean, this you rarely see a name retrace like that after it has that explosive move on earnings. This one really shocked me. You know, I only gave back one eighth of my position, as I said, but uh, I am very surprised to see the action, the market action there. They got earnings tomorrow, so we'll see. And then. Uh, my other bad trade was a, a, a trade I missed. So this SCHL, 
I bought 34 the first time, right in this area. You know, I, I unloaded in that 37, then when it came to retest 35, I was sitting there on Chart Talk saying, if we get a pivot here, you know, I'm gonna reload my position. We got the pivot, I didn't reload my position, and now I typed up the name today, you know, I should be have the boat loaded on this one because it gave me such a great re-entry. Um, so I made a mistake there, not getting back in. And then uh, some good trades, this Google on earnings, I, uh, this one's set up so, so, so perfectly. I'm gonna head to a five minute chart. Um, this was, uh, I bought opening range breakout on these earnings day, on this earnings day. And you know, it just set up so perfectly. It, it made a five minute high here off the open and it pulls in and flags out. So when it pulls in, that's when I began, you know, made a perfect 50% retracement to the day's low. That's when I started buying it and then I doubled my position through highs and then I lightened the load on the way up because um, opening range breakouts, I got to unload stock that first day. And now, now this name is setting up. I really like this name for a retest tomorrow. If I can get stock back at that 28, 25 level area, mm -hmm. I think that one's a great, great, great opportunity. They had huge earnings, market leader, all that. Uh, I loved the, seeing the weakness today. It gives me another shot. Mm -mm -mm. What else? I bought this VRRM today. Uh, and this is the great thing about the alerts. Honestly, uh, this this slipped past my radar uh, this weekend, and it's just an old alert that was set, you know, triggered from 1525. You know, I bought 1525, gave it to the day's lows, 1490, it's 35 cents. And this thing looks like it, you know, it has room to 17, 1750. So the risk reward is definitely there in that one. Um, this shop I day traded today, day traded pretty well. So a, na a name like this, where it has to be day traded, because I know where true support is. I'm not even giving it to, all right, let me, let me, let me, let me go back a little bit. Two days ago, you know, shop is weak off the open. They didn't have the best earnings, but we don't care about the earnings as much. We care about the reaction. So it bounces off support, rips higher, gives us an inside day Friday, and then shows us strength today. So here's how I traded it. You know, it, it, it set up perfectly intraday on the five minute chart for an entry through that inside day high. So I bought that 1480 area and I was just giving it to the intraday pivot low, 1460. So I'm giving it 20 bucks, but I have to unload stock because I know true support is either 1420 or way down at 1330. So I'm trying to sneak in this one and just take advantage of the, you know, the, the feisty price movement. So I buy 1480, I have a stop 1465 or whatever. It was like 18 bucks risk. So then I got my first kicks off here, this, uh, 1550 area and then if I made a new high today, which I was, I was staring at this chart all day at 11 a.m. Or what is that 1 p.m. on the East Coast? Mm -hmm. It made that new high to 1520 1525 and that's why I unloaded um, Pretty much three-quarters of my stock because I don't have the right price I'm not giving it to support, but I had a great entry and you know, I can take advantage of the strong move So I only have 25% of my position. I don't have the right stop So I can't you know, I can't treat this as a true swing trade um, but I definitely did really well with it today. Um, what was this? Friday, I-N-M-D. -I so look at a daily chart here. This name, you know, flagging at all-time highs. This is, this is the earnings day. This is the day after earnings. And intraday, I made a great entry into this one. This is a big improvement I've been trying to make. I was telling you about this uh, before the video, Bennett, is mm -hmm. not buying the open. You know, this name makes a huge move at the open. Normally, I would buy that 91, give it a lows, you know, and just hope it closes well. You know, I let it go without me off the open. It pulls in, and then I have this great entry at 89.50. I'm just giving this thing a buck to this pivot low. Uh, what was that pivot low? To 88. So 89.50 or 89.40 down to 88, dollar 40 risk. So it looks like I'm kicking quick here on that same day, but I'm still getting multiples on the risk reward. So I got rid of my. Uh, day trading stock and then I kept a piece to swing and that one just looks good you know that one just looks like it wants to you know rip higher blue sky breakout as you would say and then last but not least was the uh, trade of the week last week ISRG um, I did make one mistake in getting out of some size last week you can see where I bought it I immediately got out of some size but that's because I if I bought the if I kept on all that size I didn't want to give it down to the true pivot down here at 336 so I had enough that I could swing and now it's just you know it tickled all-time highs in reverse today um, but on a weekly chart you know it's still looking pretty good still looking like it wants to lead the market things of that nature um, so that's that's what I've been up to it lately those few things uh, what are you doing over there Ben 
So last week was probably my one of my quietest weeks. I only had really two orders in for the better part of the week, which was this STX up to 90 and that Goldman through 420. Um, so really just got into STX today up through, uh, up through 90 with a stop versus the prior, uh, prior low a day. And for now, you know, first target is looking to sell some in front of this, you know, 94 half area. And if it can kind of get it through that, then it's just trying to look to hold up, you know, for the retest up in this 105 area. So just a little, you know, buying through a little earnings flag and uh, just saw, you know, pretty good volume, even though there was, you know, we talked a lot about dojis in this, you know, the market outlook in the beginning, you know, a couple little dojis in here, but, you know, significant volume, you know, relative to the, you know, past couple of days or, or weeks in this name. So uh, just one that's been working, but again, not really much else on my end other than just moving some stuff on M1, which I believe we spoke about last week. Uh, we talked about, you know, I was taking profits in Etsy, you know, and you're talking about like the, you mentioned like your long-term account where you have to like watch the, you know, the gyrations of the name on a day-to-day -day basis. And Etsy was a perfect example. Um, this was a name where, you know, in the past we were taking profits in Amazon and shop that both went on like really big runs, you know, in the end of, you know, middle of summer, took those profits and put them into Etsy. And, you know, from that, you know, first bigger entry and with the weekly, you know, buys, you know, Etsy was up almost 50% from that part where I was rebalancing and going into the retest, that's where I took those profits. But if this was a name that was like in my like my active account, like I I would say it'd be a very low probability that I would have bought 170 and, and sold 240 because I would have seen it every day. But since it was in a different account that I'm not checking on a day-to-day -day basis, I was able to weather a lot of these little pullbacks and be able to take profits into that retest. And now that if it wants to go higher, it's even better. But if it if this is the high in the short term, at least I locked in something. Um, so just seeing that it you know still hasn't really pushed higher than kind of the day I was getting out, maybe confirming that. But um, just a little lesson of why we try to have different approaches with different types of accounts. Um, that's what I got for the for the week. All right, love it, love it. All right, so what do we have to book of the week? Book of the week. So I finished that Minner Vinny book. It was uh, what is it? Mindset Secrets. Uh, my, mindset Secrets for Winning. It was a really good book. It was, uh, you know, it's very important. It's like have a positive self-image, you know, only listen to the positive talk in your head, make goals. It was 230 pages. This thing could have been 40 pages. It was every five mm -hmm. sentences was one sentence. This guy just wanted to write a book. Like, it was, mm -hmm. I just started like skimming towards the end. It was just kind of like, it was just reiterating the same information. So very important stuff to, you know, internally think about yourself and how to plan and, and create goals and things but definitely uh didn't need to be 230 pages <laughs> so i got uh the setup by dan bilzerian okay uh, honestly it, it was so i feel like what like a lot of these like you know people like him it's like you think like his life's crazier than you read about it and it's like not as crazy reading this book it's like what his actual life was relative to like what he shows is even crazier, which is kind of hard to believe. Um, but when he kind of gets into a lot of this stuff, I know he gets like, he got like a bad rap this last year with like kind of the night stuff. Um, but when, when he, he really tried to like, take the gun from the cops at the Vegas shooting. I mean, he was trying to help. Um, <laughs> Get the, yo, go up to well, a cop so, and say, let me see your gun. But he's actually a cop. Okay, all right. Let's no, let's, I mean, let's get through this because this is don't see eye to eye on Dan Bill's area. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, he had at the end of the book, it's five hundred pages. I read it in like one day because it was just a very entertaining read. If you ever read like a Tucker Max book, it kind of read like that. Yeah, it's fucking um, trash too. Bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, he had one good point at the end where he talked about like like there's a comment saying people you know. Money can buy happiness, and he, and he refers to like money can buy pleasure, and it can't buy happiness. And he goes on like a little anecdote about the difference between the two, which I thought was very relevant, um, other than just a very entertaining read. And uh, you know, he mentions you know Vin Diesel, and he it's like there's certain celebrities that he can't mention, so he mentions like the celebrity who wears glasses at nighttime, and like the picture shows Vin Diesel. So there's like some like celebrity stories that are in there that are like trying to like play them down, but then there's like the celebrities that he mentions and stuff. So it's it was a, you know, again, it's 500 pages. I read it, you know, this weekend alone. Um, so it was a surprisingly good read. Yeah. Again, you will probably hate it. But, no, I'll, uh, I'll but. hate it. I'll hate it. <laughs> Trash. Yeah, well, anyways, that's all I got. That's what makes a market. All right, folks, that's all we got. Let's wrap up this Chart Talk 103. Maybe a little like, comment, subscribe. 
Again, we do this for you guys. So any questions, leave it in the comments and whatnot. We will see you next week.